Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rivals and the start of a different kind of formatting towards it. Uh, if you may have remembered uh, after I posted the, the previous episode a little while back now, I was kind of going through a bit of a strenuous, kind of a tired burnout from it, which, you know, is not exactly a really great thing to say only six episodes into the series, but I felt that the series needed a bit different of a restructuring because I feel like more of you guys probably want to know, you know, the core, like, what's the, the most important thing about the cars, and that's how fast they go around a given track that I'm usually requested. So, uh, that's going to be the plan going forward. I'll be taking the two cars, uh, take them around the track, see which one's the fastest, but I'll also still mention which one I prefer the most uh, out of the two. Uh, so, in this episode, we're taking a look at two rally cars in Gran Turismo 4. This was requested by The Real Emil. The cars in question are the Citroen XR rally car and the Peugeot 206 rally car, which honestly, in my opinion, is not a very good pairing for various reasons, as you will see, but he did request that I do these one too, so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. And, of course, we will we'll be starting with the Xara, where you will immediately notice its problem. This car honestly does not perform very well off-road at all in my opinion. Now, it's a front-wheel drive car, so it only power so only the front wheels are being powered, but usually that shouldn't matter too much because front-wheel drive cars are usually pretty decent at rallying. This car just constantly off-road is spinning its wheels constantly c continuing to just keep going over forward and forward and forward and forward 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 and it's so it's just constantly kind of running at red line spinning its tires and because of that I can't even tell what's the best gearing to use in this car. I'm pretty sure I have c done it completely wrong throughout my laps with this car but the issue is is that it just does I just can't get that feeling for it. It feels like it's just just constantly going at, at, at a constant uh, uh, excuse me spinning tires rate. So I, I feel like it feels it gives the feeling that I can't put the power down into the car which is a bit annoying to say the least because although that being said this wasn't always going to be the case with Citroen because you know I, this was a, it was around the, this is the 99 XR rally car and this was around the period of time where Citroen I think was just starting to get into uh, rallying at least for what we know them best with uh, the Xara did uh, tr improve quite an awful lot over the next few years and then we saw what they eventually would become. Uh, but this car is just such a... Is just nowhere near, I think, that, that kind of level that the later Xaras would be. It, see, it just seemed like a more tame, just not as uh, eye-catching car. It's And it's got nearly 300 horsepower, but it doesn't even have like 200 pound-feet of torque. And, it's front, and with the front-wheel drive, and it's just not a good combination off-road in this game. The car... I, it's just so difficult to put the power down because it feels, cause it just feels like I, c I was wouldn't really be able to get anywhere. So, whilst I do three laps with each car, that 153 is a, is kind of an example of just how poorly I think this car drives around the track. I mean, maybe you might be able to drive a lot better than I can. That's easily possible, but for me, the car just it just felt sluggish. It felt slow. And the handling was, eh, it was okay, it was okay, I, as a rally car should be, I, I guess, at least anything okay or better, but it also didn't really wow me. It's a car that just kind of felt like it's there to be mostly, interestingly enough, driven in either on either tarmac tracks or wet tracks. And, and whilst there's, of course, obviously plenty of tarmac tracks in Gran Turismo 4, for very obvious reasons... There is only one wet track in GT4, and that is a wet version of Sakuba Circuit. So it kind of feels like this car is just kind of here, but isn't really worth going for. I don't know if this if it drives very similar to this in Gran Turismo 5 or Gran Turismo 6, but uh, it, it just here personally for me, it was really it felt like it was really being exposed. It didn't. It just felt completely underwhelming. Uh, I so I'll also mention though, I, going back to it as well. Uh, I I know people will probably want to know sometimes about uh, you know maybe the quarter mile and top speed. Which if you do, just let me know. 
Uh, the point system will will be gone. There's no point in the point system anymore. I had some people, uh, in, even in my Discord server, asking what was the idea behind that. Anyways, and really it was just, I guess, to kind of com- I in my head I thought it's probably just a way to kind of compare the two. But really, when you look looking back at it, it kind of just seemed a bit too unnecessarily silly. Because if you want to know just if which car is better, it's there's the video here. So you have and then so you know exactly which is better. I can easily just tell you and whatnot. Uh, so, but the Exara to me, just going back to the car now, actually, hang on, before I get back to the car, I just say, but yeah, if you want me to show off stuff like Xerta 400 quarter mile, uh, quarter mile or top speed, just, just let me know and I'll, and I'll uh, throw that in. I'll, pr I'll try, I'll probably try something a little bit different with those ones too. Uh, I just got to figure out how would I would be able to get that working to the way I want it to be because it's a pretty... I got a pretty interesting way with how I would want to uh, present that, so it's just a thing to keep kind of hopefully keep in mind. But for if if not, I will just basically do the lap and also mention what I think drives better because that's I think that's what people want to know the most personally. And you know, I I'm not just doing this change because I felt like it. I did do a straw poll and. The very large portion of you guys said just go for this route because if you if it's stressing out the previous way, don't put that extra strain on yourself. Just kind of go for the other direction. And honestly, because of that, I I generally thank you guys for understanding. It's very nice to hear your feedback, and I do try. I will still be trying to get the best that I can out of these videos here on the Sunday time slot because this will mostly be alternating on Sundays with. A, th either this, or an episode of Rivals, or an episode of the Top Gear Laps on Forza Motorsport 4. So, but personally, though, I think, I think, I think it should be still pretty interesting because, you know, it it will still show what exactly these cars can do. But for the Xara, the best that I was able to manage after three laps was a one minute forty nine point four two four, which honestly is not very impressive at all. It's kind of r crap, actually. So, and then we get to the 206, and almost immediately it just feels like 10,000 times better. And that's because not only does it have tons of more torque, it's also four wheel drive. It's got it, it, all the power is going to all four wheels, which means it has the maximum amount of traction that it can get off road. So it can easily pick up speed and just blitz its way around the corners. And it's super, super notable with the 206. I mean, Keeping in mind, 99, the Xara was was just a kind of like a newcomer that was kind of was ne never going to really beat the likes of Subaru or Mitsubishi or Ford or Toyota, and Peugeot was kind of right on there. They were kind of coming around the same time, I think too. Though I think they were around a little bit longer, but Peugeot already had that kind of notable rally pedigree. We were such, we, you know, with the likes of the 205 and whatnot, but uh, Citroen didn't really have that at the time. And it didn't take long for the 206 because by 2000, it already won a world champion. It had a, a, a person, it had a world champion driver. I can't recall if they Peugeot also won the manufacturer championship. I think they did. And I can't remember if it was 2000 or 2002 though, because both years, I, those years, I believe it was. I think the driver who won was. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Marcos Gronholm or something. I don't know how you say that, but he was driving a 206 at the time. So the car, it didn't take long for Peugeot to return to its winning roots after uh, coming back. So so you can tell that with the 206, they just had the, the rally pedigree there from the past to be able to put it into the 206. And really just driving this car, it just shows. It, like, it definitely has uh, all that kind of show towards... Uh, Making good time, and so even there on the first lap, that's a one thirty six four seven six. That is a dramatic improvement. And honestly, I could just have stopped it there, but I felt you know the Citroen got two laps, so let's give the uh, the two oh six uh, or three laps as well. And I don't exactly do as well here on the second lap. I kind of screwed it up uh, a little bit and whatnot, but even still, the car still. You could just tell that it was just far more capable of doing this track, because this, this car was was designed to compete with the likes of Subaru and the Mitsubishi and Ford and whatnot. I think I think Toyota kind of slowly exited out by the start start of the 2000s. 
I believe. I don't quote me on that for sure. I know Toyota. I mean, I know Toyota won the 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 constructors championship in '99. I remember that one specifically for uh, whatever particular reason. In fact, whilst I got this up, I can bring up my phone and you know you you, you could just see uh, as the car goes around the track once more. So let's see. I'm gonna just start with night. Let's just start with like '98. 1998 World Rally Championship. 26 season, in fact. But yeah, uh, yes, okay, so that was. Yes, okay, that was meant to be. Okay, I just need to make sure. So yeah, 1999. Yeah. Yeah, it was Toyota in 1999. Uh, so that's what I thought. And then 2000, it was. Yep, Marcus. Marcus gone home in the Peugeot, and they also did one win the manufacturer's title that year as well. So, I just gotta check here about Toyota. No, Toy. Oh yeah, Toyota already pulled out after '99. They weren't even in 2000 like I thought they were, because it shows here you know Peugeot, Ford, Subaru, Mitsubishi, Seat, Hyundai, and Skoda. So yeah, there's there's no nothing of Citroen, interestingly enough. I guess Citroen didn't. I guess Citroen didn't enter in 2000 or something. Oh, they don't even. They're not even listed under. Uh, okay. Ah, I see. This is where I believe the problem kind of shows now. The reason the Peugeot in this game is just a much better choice, especially over the Citroen, is because the 206 was designed at the start to be a world rally car. The Citroen was more designed for the Junior World Rally Championship, the JWRC, which had a young Sebastian Loeb winning in 2000, the JWRC Championship in 2001. I th he, I th he participated in, I think, like all, every race of the season except for one, and of those races, he won all of them. And that was def and I know for a fact that was probably with Citroen by that point, so... That's where you can tell the two differences. Is these cars just that you can't compare the Peugeot and the Citroen in this game. They're they're just not meant to be uh, combined together. But regardless of that, a one minute thirty five point oh six six just means the two oh six just easily hammers the Exara. And honestly, it's just a much better car to drive. It's it's a lot quicker. It's a, it gets its traction a lot better in the in the corners and on the rally surface. It's just. It's a nice car. It's 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 a I, it's a car that I can honestly enjoy driving in this game compared to the Exara. And honestly, so if you're looking for a fast car, go with the 206. If you're looking for a car that will also drive well, go with the 206. So yeah, it's pretty clear that obvious that the Peugeot 206 wins in both lap time and driving experience. It's just clearly the better car, and. That's going to do it for today's episode. Uh, hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed this bit of change. Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, uh, stay tuned for the next episode. It'll probably be two Sundays from now because next Sunday I will probably be putting up a another episode of the Forza 4 Top Gear Laps. But in the meantime, guys, just like I said, stay tuned for that. And as always, if you want to donate to my Patreon, uh, join my forum boards, or just follow me on Twitter. All the links for that are in the description box down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and take care.